talking about the newest modem slash router for your T-Mobile home internet. This is the new cylinder, the black cylinder, instead of the older white one, which was a, uh, a square rectangular shape, which was only 4G capable. And this one is 4G and 5G capable if you're able to pick up 5G in your area. And this one also has the 2.4 gigahertz band and the 5 gigahertz band. So it's uh, capable of both. I've had this particular router since early May is when we finally got it. Waited a pretty good while for this one to come in. Was was really looking forward to this one being uh, having better signal. They claim this version was better than the older version. So uh, we'll give you my input on that and a little bit more. So you guys stick around and we'll talk a little bit more about the newest modem slash router for your T-Mobile home internet. First off, I just wanted to say it comes with the uh, modem slash router itself. Just a quick start guide, no other directions or anything like that. You have your power adapter and it comes with an ethernet cable. That is the only thing that's included in the box. And if we look here on the box on the front, you have a picture of the cylinder itself and it says high speed internet gateway, 4G, 5G at the bottom. T-Mobile emblem there, what's included on the back. T-Mobile emblem there. Nothing on the bottom. And as we come into our living room here, excuse the mess, we have ours located right in the living room, which is about the center point of our house for all of our devices and everything, and it picks up. Uh, we get two bars of signal on this, so everywhere I place it, the, the max I've got is two bars, and every once in a while I pick up a third bar, but uh, this is the best place we've noticed for hours. And just to quickly show you what's on the back, you have your power. Right here, there's a UPS. I'm not sure exactly what that's for. You got your on and off button. You have your uh, a USB, and you have a couple of your uh, LAN inputs, and of course, you have a, a telephone adapter. And what differs from this model, this is the bottom of the unit. This has a SIM card tray instead of just a little slot. So you'll have to uh, turn the unit over, unscrew that tray to be able to get access to your SIM card. All right, looking down at the top of the unit, you have your touch screen right here. So if you tap there, it'll show you a few different things there. It shows you your connection. And if you slide it over, it'll show how many devices you have connected to the Wi-Fi. Shows your battery stats and a few different things like that. Be honest with you, I'm not really digging the cylinder. Not impressed with the cylinder model compared to the last model. I really, really enjoyed the last model as far as the shape and the where you put it, everything. It looked a whole lot better in different places. It's a big old cylinder. Well, it's not that big, but... If I missed any of the features, I do apologize. It's not really that many there. You just, it's really easy. You just turn it on, you get it, you plug it in, you turn it on, and uh, that's pretty much it. And this is what it came with, uh, just a quick start guide. It's like, that's it. And on the quick start guide, it tells you there, step one, position your unit power on and then you just uh, you can download the app and I think you have to scan there's a barcode on the bottom of the unit that you can scan to help you through the setup process and hey, that's where you uh, name your device and uh, set your password and stuff like that and then we have this high-speed internet gateway safety and regulatory information very nice like I said, I've had this unit since May, about the first week of May, and now it is August the 21st, Saturday, August the 21st, so a little over three months I've had the unit, and I want to talk about it a little bit today. My old unit that I had, uh, if you guys haven't seen that video where I unboxed and done a speed test, I'll leave it up here. Go check that out. You can see what kind of speeds I was getting from the uh, original box, which was just the 4G. This this unit is 4G and 5G capable if you have 5G in your area. They're supposedly supposed to be updating and upgrading the towers. They've been doing that for a while, but uh, we don't really have 5G right here at my house. It, it only picks up the 4G capabilities. But I want to show you a few things that they don't tell you because you don't get any information about anything really you, you have to figure it out on your own or call and most of the time when you do call the customer service they're super nice but uh, if you don't talk to tech support the person you talk to really don't have any knowledge about uh, uh, anything really uh, 
one of the tech support guys I was talking to, he was looking up my location and I couldn't understand him and he was trying to t tell me what road, I asked him what roads and stuff my towers were on because I have two competing towers were uh, here at my location and they're very, very close to each other, really, really close together. With this particular router that we have, the newest router, it always connects for some reason or another to the slowest tower and I have to call every once in a while to get them connected to the faster tower. Sometimes you can cut it off and cut it back on and it'll do it automatically. It just depends, but it's kind of kind of frustrating, but all right, I want to go ahead and tell you a few things about the unit that they don't tell you or it's not in the guides or anything like that. Uh, with my old unit, the old square rectangle white box, uh, it had separate 2.4 gigahertz bands and 5 gigahertz bands, and it was... Uh, very obvious when you set it up because you could set up the different and name the two different uh, bands. When you set this one up, it doesn't show you that it has a separate 2.4 gigahertz and a separate 5 gigahertz band. But if you go into the router itself, the modem router, it tells you on the bottom, the gateway there, how to get to it through your uh, computer here so you can look at different settings and whatnot. But if you go to your network, and go to your Wi-Fi networks and you can see over here that it has the 2.4 gigahertz band and a 5 gigahertz band. Now if you go over here to the 2.4 gigahertz band it shows the SSID Let me pull that up so you can see it and this is what I named it when I first set it up. I, I named mine TMOB, 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 whatever you want to call it and it automatically names the 2.4 gigahertz band and the 5 gigahertz band that that same name and it doesn't ask you to set up either separately or anything so what I've just recently found out is when I go to the 5 gigahertz band I can rename that band you can see that right there I named that the T-Mob, T-Mob, whatever you want to call it, 5 that way when I go to a device I can connect to the 5 gigahertz band or the 2.4 gigahertz if I so choose so with that being said all you got to do is change the name and go down here and save changes. Wait a second, and it's automatically saved. And that way, when you go up here to your to connect to your Wi-Fi, you can see there's two different settings right here. You got your are two different ones to connect to. You got your regular one and your five gigahertz that I just renamed. And I just found that out maybe a few weeks ago, I guess. And I've had this for almost three months, and that definitely helps out a whole lot, especially when you're trying to. Um, upload or download it's a little bit faster with the 5 gigahertz band for sure not much but a little bit and you can see all the settings and stuff you can you can change those within the if you want to or need to shows you what channels you're connected to to each uh, band and if you connect via ethernet to another router you can turn the Wi-Fi off and that's supposed to keep it cooler make it faster I'm not sure there's a lot of videos out there guys telling you the difference between uh, this that or other all right, if we go to the overview here, guys, it shows you right here on the very front, front page, and it shows you right here your primary signal, and that is my 4G. Your secondary signal is 5G, and you can see that my uh, router modem is not picking up any 5G at all. It doesn't say 5G, but from what I gather, that is your 5G signal, and I'm not getting any 5G at all. I'm getting two bars of 4G LTE and you can see that it's connected and you can see the uh, strength and whatnot like that. You can move your stuff around and keep refreshing. Move it little uh, turns at a time, move different places and, until you get the right signal that you need. They don't tell you that this is the 5G right here. For some reason I, I'm not sure why but and I don't know why mine keeps connecting to the slower router but I want to go ahead and I'll show you some speed test guys that I'm getting right at the moment and you can see that it is uh, a quarter till four on a Saturday and I am connected to the five gigahertz band and I'll do both bands real quick and I'll show you uh, the difference let's let's go ahead and start with the Google speed test on the five gigahertz band and I can already tell that I'm connected to the slower uh, tower because I usually get between 10 and 20, 10, 15 on the slower tower, and usually between uh, 30 and 70 on the uh, faster tower. So I don't know why this connects. I don't know if I need to get a different router to put the SIM card in. Uh, 
or something like that but and that's on the five gigahertz band guys okay let's go over here and change it to the 2.4 gigahertz band and you can see it's highlighted connected let's see what that does if there's any difference at all and you can tell wow that it is super slow today guys that's terrible but believe it or not with with five megabits per second download speed it, it does quite a bit you can still watch 720 1080 uh, uh, videos and stuff like that with even just five I'm I'm pretty happy if I can get 10 or more these days but uh, it's kind of ridiculous to have to call to get them con to connect it to the uh, the faster tower that gets kind of old but I've got to tell you to be honest with you guys compared to the spectrum internet even at the slowest speeds that the T-Mobile has, it is more consistent for me personally. This is all my, my personal opinion, and uh, I'm not T-Mobile's not sponsoring me or anything like that. My personal opinion: this is a more steady, stable connection, even at 4G, than the cable. I don't know why, but I've had so much problems through the uh, spectrum, and uh, and the price comparison at fifty dollars. Uh, with no fees or anything like that for the T-Mobile compared to I think it was like 70 something 70 some dollars a month for the Spectrum that was so inconsistent all the time uh, it's a whole lot better deal for me and that's just my personal opinion let's connect back to the five we have run another one real fast and you can see it popping up to almost 10 there on the five gig and, and just to let you know guys I'm I'm in the basement I'm in my basement studio and the router is upstairs so you can and you can see that the, the signal coming down here is really really good and I'm down here in my basement studio guys so that's that's another factor a determining factor of your speed I'm a little bit of ways away from the router itself and and a few doors and walls and and stuff like that uh, in between uh, myself and the router so that determines the, the speed down here a little bit. If I go upstairs, the speed will probably be a little bit different. And I'll, I will do that. I'll go up to the router itself and connect my phone to the 5 gigahertz band right at the router itself just to see if there's any difference. You guys can see uh, almost, almost 10 megabits per second download and uh, 6.23 upload. And we'll go upstairs and we'll do that now. to sum it up is the uh, t-mobile home internet worth it especially with a new router it is for me in my personal opinion i really do enjoy it and have been uh since we had it uh, with even with the original router uh the, even though the internet with this router particular router uh connects to the slower tower sometimes or most of the time uh, even with that i'm still able to stream uh, i'm able to watch uh, netflix with no problems uh, we watch amazon prime uh we stream uh, YouTube videos all the time and upload. And I'm uploading and downloading, no problems whatsoever. Uh, I can live stream. Uh, I haven't done many live streams. I'll have to do some more of those. But uh, I can live stream without any problems. And it does uh, a pretty high-quality video with no problems whatsoever. And, uh, yeah, it, it works great in my personal opinion. Is it worth it? It's totally worth it. And for $50 a month, and you can see right there, guys, $50 a month. And that's with uh, ten dollar uh, if you do auto pay. So it, it's normally sixty dollars without auto pay. And if you do auto pay, it is fifty dollars a month with no fees, just a flat fifty bucks. And so that's that's totally worth it to me. If you have any questions, and I, I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability, just leave a comment down below. If you have any uh, concerns or anything like that, or or any tips from me personally that would help me get a better better signal or uh, to connect to the right tower. Or, 
anything like that. Any tips would be uh, very much appreciated. You can give me any tips. Leave them in the comment. Uh, definitely leave me a thumbs up, guys. Hit that like button. Uh, that helps out a whole lot. I really do appreciate it. If you like the video, definitely give it that thumbs up and uh, leave a comment. And if, uh, if you feel so inclined, please uh, click that subscribe button. Ring that bell for future video notifications. I really do appreciate it. And with that being said, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. And as always, plan, prepare, and practice. Handy out.